Hello. Hey, everybody. As we get started here, hey, listen, be sure to comment where you're joining from. Let me know where you're at. Um, you know, I hope you're not driving. Yeah, that would not be a good thing. But listen, don't be shy. I'd love to hear from you. And I'm not great at seeing the comments as I'm talking, but I do check them all once I'm done. Oh, and listen, if you would share this live on your timeline so others can learn about how to survive the betrayal of a loved one without losing your faith. Ready? Yeah, I am too, I think. <laughs> Welcome to Keeping Your Faith, How to Survive the Betrayal of a Loved One. I'm Faye Bryant here with a new Keeping Your Faith Facebook Live for every woman and a few guys too who want to keep your faith when betrayed and survive the betrayal of a loved one without having to give up yourself. I'm using the story of Elena of the Grandma, Mom, and Me saga to share about this. She has many things to teach us, I think. First, Elena experienced triple betrayal. All at one time, triple betrayal. Grant, Elena's husband, betrayed her by entering into a sexual relationship with another woman. He was the husband and the father of two children, one on the way. And yet he found another woman. And he, I don't want to tell you everything, but I'll share this. He also started a campaign to uh, make Elena appear as though she were the one having the affair. And you have to understand this is back in the early 50s when a reason for divorce had to be given. And the reason for divorce would be adultery but he had to come up with a way to prove that she was the one committing adultery. Alex was Elena's brother and he betrayed her by believing the lies that Grant told about her having the affair. He believed those even though he knew his sister and should have known that she wouldn't have done anything like that. And Louise was Elena's mother, and she betrayed Elena by believing the lies that Alex told that, uh, that Grant had come up with instead of trusting her daughter. Three people betraying her at one time. Elena could have just fallen apart. I mean, she lost her marriage. She lost her children because Grant had worked so hard and so diligently to make it seem like she was a horrible mother, that she was going off and seeing this man. Remember, this was the early 50s. And that she was proven, although it was all based on lies, to be an unfit mother. And so she lost custody of her children. And Grant even said he believed, though I'm not sure he believed it, but he had everybody else believing that the baby that Elena was carrying was not his. She lost her home. She lost all income. I mean, she was living as a wife at home, taking care of the children. She lost income. She lost her mother, her brother, her sisters. They were younger. She lost them because her mother didn't want them having anything to do with her. She lost her self-esteem, her confidence, everything. Her life changed drastically. She could have lost her faith. She could have just said, well, God, you allowed all this to happen. And maybe she did to a degree. Yet she knew that he was there. She knew. Ephesians 2.8 says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. 
and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Now, I know that many translations and, and even looking at the Jewish translations of that verse say that it's when it says you can't take credit for this, it's talking about salvation. And I agree. Salvation is is likely the, the part of that verse. But I also think that when this verse says it is a gift from God, I think God is saying the faith itself is a gift from him. It's hard to conjure up faith. I mean, faith, he, Hebrews 1, 11, 1 says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. We don't do that on our own. We just don't. And I have a friend, if I can get it to come up here, who uh, just posted a few minutes ago. His name is Tony Colson. He's a pastor over in South Carolina. And he said, fear is the imagination of the past. Faith is the vision of the future. Faith says, I'm not seeing it. I'm not living it right now, but I will be. Elena was looking at the worst possible outcome. She was living it. In the book, you learn that she went and found a job. She had her baby. Even though it was denied by her husband, it was his. The child was his. She was very fortunate to find a restaurant uh, owned by this Greek couple who gave her a place not only to work, but gave her a place to live. Elena realized that that didn't just happen. That was God doing that for her. Her faith was still alive, though diminished. Does that make sense? She had her faith and she understood that God was still in control and still in charge. But how could he let all this happen? See, faith is not really a Pollyanna view of life. We're not just looking at it saying, oh, everything will be better. Everything will be fine. It's really a real view of life, a real view of our circumstances based on God's perspective. And he sees everything, not just the part that we see. He sees everything. So we're not just going along, la, 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 la. We're going along with a clear vision of what is reality based on God's perspective. Oh, isn't that much better than looking at what we've got and thinking that it's the end? It's this worst is the end. Elena chose to keep putting one foot in front of the other because she believed that the betrayal she experienced was not the end for her. She saw something else coming. She saw something more to her life. See, at the time that this happened, she was just 26 years old. Hard to think that the rest of your life could be better after this devastating happening. But Elena chose to believe that. She had the, the chance to go to Florida to work, to hopefully make a living and to get away from this place where she was living, where she couldn't even visit her children. There's so much pain, so much hurt that she decided to leave. There's so much more to that story. I'm just not going to go into all of it. I could sit here and tell you the whole thing. We'd be here a while. But Elena chose to keep putting one foot in front of the other. She kept doing that. She kept doing that. And for a time, she did make some less than optimum choices. She didn't always choose well in that point in her life. But in time, she was right back on track, walking and growing in her faith and leading her daughter in that kind of faith. See, and the result 
of her continuing to put that one foot in front of the other was renewed relationships with her mother and her brother, restored relationships with her children and her grandchildren, and a husband who loved her and cherished her for almost 60 years. See, she went ahead and lived so often, especially in times like we're living right now, we think that life itself has betrayed us. We think the government has betrayed us. Pastors have betrayed us. Family members have betrayed us. We think that life is never going to be normal or even worth living again. Faith tells us that's not true. Faith tells us it's just not true. When we stop and we, we're thinking in fear, like what Tony said, that we're looking at the past and we stay in that cycle and we keep reliving what's already happened, then we're going to stay in that fear. But if we will look with faith and we will look ahead and well, even looking at our present circumstances from the viewpoint of God, things start changing. Mainly us. We start realizing that this that happened right here was not really what I thought it was. And that that happened over there wasn't as bad as what I thought it was. And oh my goodness, would you look at what's coming? We get to choose, don't you think? We get to choose whether we're going to stay in the past or live for the future. Personally, I want to live right now with a view towards the future. People so often talk about, oh, well, I wish I was 18 again, or I wish I was 25 again. I don't. I really don't. And it's not because of what was going on in the past. It's just that I don't want to be that age again. I want to be right where I'm at. I want to be right where I am living this particular time, even if it's weird. And trust me, it's weird. Don't you think? I mean, uh, masks and a shortage of toilet paper and we have to stand six feet apart from each other. And we've had friends and family die because of a virus that we really don't have an idea how to contain. So much of life is different now, but the fact is as believers, we don't have to fear it. We don't. When we look at the life we're living right now, when we look at the COVID-19 situation from God's perspective, we can realize that we can and we must keep on living. I shared an article the other day about uh, whether or not Christians should pass on this rumor and that rumor and, and this theory and that theory of conspiracy theories and things that are, you know, oh, well, these people are doing this thing and these people are doing this thing and it's all because of this and this is what's going to happen. Honestly, and the article said this very succinctly and numerous times, we who are believers need to be sharing our faith with others. If we are living in such a time that the circumstances are dire, we need to be sharing the love of Christ, the touch of Christ. We need to be sharing the gift of Christ, the good news, the truth of salvation with everybody around us. Because I promise you, not everybody around you knows him as Savior. And if we say that we're going to care about people, we need to say that we care about people in more than whether or not they get this virus. We as believers need to be caring about people enough to tell them about their eternity and to offer them the answer to where they are with God at that point. If we're going to care about people, we need to care more about the what's coming than about the here and now, especially if it's our family 
Oh, but talking to family is so hard, isn't it? To tell them about the Lord, to tell them that they they need to turn from the ways that they're living and turn to the Lord. It's so hard because they know us. They know those times that we've flubbed and fallen. They know the times that we've cussed in traffic. They know the times that we've said things that we shouldn't have to people. They know us. And so when we say something about living for Christ, they're going to look at us like we're idiots or they're going to pull up the things that we've done in the past. It's okay. Their eternity rests on whether or not we share about Christ with them. Let's don't let them down. Let's don't let them down. See, we need to understand that all these things are going to happen. Betrayal is going to happen and it hurts. Oh, it hurts. It is not fun. Any of you who have experienced divorce or a boyfriend or girlfriend cheating on you, a spouse cheating on you, um, a company who betrayed your, your longtime employment to hire somebody else and fire you, any kind of betrayal it hurts. It takes away those things that Elena lost. It can take your marriage your children, your family, your uh, co-workers. It can take away your income, your home. And all that hurts. It steals the best from us. The things that we have enjoyed, the family. I mean, think about it. Losing your mother over the lies of somebody who isn't even in your family. How do you survive that? It steals the best from us. And we have to determine at that point whether we're going to live or if we're going to choose to curl up in, in a ball and die inside. We have to decide if we're going to do that, if we're just going to curl up and let life stop inside us. Or if we're going to put one foot in front of the other and just live. Just live. Living in a way that's going to be different than what it was. See, Elena was this happily married young woman, mother of two, a third coming. And suddenly, everything changed. She could have just curled up in a ball. She could have ended up on the streets in Detroit and just stopped living. She could have, she could have done any number of things to just stop living and thriving. But she chose that instead she was going to get a job that would support her and her new daughter. And when that being so close to her other two children was more than she could handle, she made the tough choice of leaving her daughter with that couple to go and find a place where she could make a better life for herself and her daughter. Everything changed, but she chose to live. She chose to love again. She chose to marry again. She chose to return to her faith that was never really gone. This is what we can do. This is what we can learn from this. Unexpected results can happen when we keep on living. When we keep on living. When we let our faith continue. The main idea here is that you really can keep your faith even when you've been betrayed without having to give up yourself. You don't give up who you are. Elena could have could have just decided, well, if they think I'm a liar, I'm just going to lie. She could have decided that, but she didn't. She remained who she was and just shifted. Right now, I think the term is that we call, we pivot. We pivot and we, we stay the same, but we work differently. You don't have to give up yourself. So listen, if I've piqued your interest about Elena, 
and you would like to understand more about how keeping your faith in the face of betrayal, I would like to invite you to hop on over to faybryant.com slash author and get an instant download of Elena, book two of the Grandma, Mom, and Me saga for 50% off. Yes, you can get the book for 50% off by using the coupon code SSD516. That's SSD516. You can read through the book. You can see how she was betrayed and how recognize how you've been betrayed and learn how you can survive the betrayal of the loved one or loved ones without having to give up on yourself. Again, that's 50% off discount by using the coupon code SSD516. That's at faybryant.com slash author. That's faybryant.com slash author. And listen, if you have enjoyed this Saturday sit down, I would love to know. Drop a comment and then share the live with your people. Until next week, I am Faye Bryant. It's so good to see you. Hope to see you again. Bye.